15 more students of Baptist High School kidnapped in Kaduna State last month have regained freedom. They were released after the payment of an undisclosed ransom by their parents. About 140 students were kidnapped from the school, out of which 56 have been released and about three escaped. 63 more students are still in captivity. Baptist Convention President Israel Akanji says efforts are on to ensure no student is left behind. You stand throughout the night. Sorry. I give you glory. I give you honor. I worship you. I worship you, King of Glory. I worship you. The number is smaller than what we were expecting because we have 78, we had 78 out there. They've given us 15, that means 63 to come. But in everything, God says we should give thanks, and we are giving thanks for what he has done. And we are trusting that the same God who has brought these 15 out is going to help us to receive the other 63. Joining us live is the Cardinal State Chairman of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Reverend Joseph Hayab. Good evening, Mr. Hayab. Thank you very much. Good evening, Nigerians, and thank you very much, uh, Team Africa. I don't know what I have to say. Congratulations. But it must be a relief seeing more students released. How did this happen? You know that uh, since the 28th we are released, uh, we've been negotiating and discussing with the bandit through one of our, through our representative, that is the president of the parties in Kaduna. Uh, he has been doing a very excellent job, and uh, we are supporting. Uh, parents did their best to raise some funds, and uh, other spirited individuals also assisted. But there was an understanding that they are going to release about 40 or yesterday. But the usual game again, they ended up just releasing 15. So we still have 58 as uh, has been quoted, or uh, 63 that has been quoted with the bandit. This is not what we wanted. We wanted to have all these children back. Because yeah, apart from the trauma of having their children there, the pains other parents are going through when you keep releasing children and they come, others don't see their children. You make them just feel that the whole world has come. How, how do they look, the ones that were released? Uh, do they look um, well taken care of, machiated? Uh, it's even going to be wrong for us to ever imagine that the bandits would take care of our children. Uh, the fact is that they were not looking good because they came yesterday and had some little attention in the night. Probably that's why what you're seeing looks a little bit bright. But all the parents that I've spoken with them, I met, I got them in hospitals with their children. They would just say, Pastor, I'm already in hospital with my daughter. Pastor, I'm already in hospital with my son. Pastor, I'm already in hospital with my children. So uh, people who are looking good cannot be taken to hospital immediately. Mm. Something, you see, these children cannot have seen this number of this, and we expect them they are going to look good. Mm. We've always just used good words as a way of encouraging ourselves because we know that the situation of these children is not good. Well, uh, we know that uh, parents had accused the Cardinal State government of not being supportive. Has that changed? Uh, well, you see, there are too many, uh, there are different versions about this conversation. Number one, Cardinal State government, to my mind, have really never been supportive to every problem that people bring to our table. The governor usually have this very volatile posture to virtually everything. And then recently he came with a new tactics so that he can quickly cover his uh, traps by saying, no, I don't want to discuss with bandits. None of us have ever asked the governor to discuss with bandits. We will not even allow our government to discuss with bandits. Because if our government discuss with bandits, then we will have a serious problem in our hands, on our hands. Because bandits will keep kidnapping everybody in Kaduna since they are discussing with government. But what we just want from government is to do what constitutionally it is expected of her. Protect lives and properties of citizens. Uh, when these children were there, they shut down all schools and say, they are shutting down the schools because the military will go out there 
for some exercise to wipe out or to clear out the bandits. This is three weeks. Nothing has changed. We are still paying to get these children back. The talking kind of about paying, paying, talking about paying to get these children back, it must be hard on the parents, especially the parents are not, you know, financially very uh, viable, strong. The parents there that cannot afford even 5,000 there, they will have to now put pressure on their relations, uh, the church, and other well-wishers to get money. Some leaders have to go out of their way to begin to make money from other people and add to whatever the parents can gather before we get this children. I have tried to explain this several times and said to the bandits, these parents are not rich parents. These parents are poor parents. These parents do not have the kind of money you are asking us. The fact is that for us to even raise the money we are giving you, we make tremendous sacrifices. Those who paid money the first time, had to go and borrow the money. They've not even paid back the loan, and their children didn't come back, and then they do not release their children. Similarly now, when another batch of gathering came, they, some people gathered money among the parents, but not all of them actually give the amount that they were asked. Can you tell us how much total have been paid so far? We've paid a lot of money. I don't want to talk about the amount for now because we still have 63 students that are not back, and we just want to keep figures to our chest until we have them. And what's the condition given before the remaining ones but will be released? Money, 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 money. I think all the bandits are doing is to get more money. And I keep asking this question. How can this bandit be receiving those kind of huge money? Not small money, sister. And are they keeping that money in the bush? I don't think I will agree with that. Where do they take that money? Do they launch that money in the bank? Are they keeping that money in somebody's house? Do we have intelligence at all that someone cannot follow and know what is going on? This is the problem we have. And these are some of the questions we are asking and we don't seem to have answers. And the, the way forward is, I guess, to wait until more money is gathered and given to them? Well, we, we decide that we shouldn't even wait another 24 hours if our security will act accordingly. We are not asking them to go and shoot the children or shoot anybody, but there is a way security can distract this bandit. There's a way security can put this bandit on the run to the extent that if they had collected any small money from us, they want to go and eat that money without waiting. But they are having a field day that they will collect money and give us small part of the children and ask for another money because they are not in any haste. There's no one that is putting them under any fear. So they are comfortable. They will collect our money, wait again after two days. They ask us, okay, we won't release the second batch. You must give another money. And there's nothing. We do. So now, I've said this and I want to repeat. The bandit seems to be the ones calling the shot. And we have to obey. Well, on that sad note, we have to end this uh, interview. Reverend Joseph Hayab, thank you so much for, for your time. And we wish you and uh, the, the rest of the parents whose children are being held um, all the best. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.